Good afternoon and welcome everybody. This is Mark Chaikin, founder of Chaikin Analytics, and I'm very excited to be introducing today's webinar presenters, Josh Minlin and Joe Bacella. Josh and Joe came to Chaikin Analytics with uh, a lot of experience working with investors and traders uh, in their previous positions. And since they've been at Chaikin, they've really been uh, invaluable to our clients uh, working with them in group sessions and one-on-one -on -one sessions, teaching them about Chaikin Analytics uh, and how to use it uh, to be a better trader or investor. In this afternoon's webinar, they're going to share the feedback that they've gotten in these one-on-one uh, -on -one and uh, interactive group sessions, working with our clients to make Chaikin Analytics part of their investment process and make people better traders and investors. And I think you're going to find this very interesting because it all derives from the feedback that they've gotten about what your problems are, what your issues are, and how Chaikin can help you solve them. So with that, it's, it's my great pleasure to introduce Joe Bacella and Josh Minlin. All right, great. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for giving us a bit of your time this afternoon. It's wonderful to be here with you all. Uh, this is Joe Bacella here at Chaikin Analytics, and joining me in just a few moments is Josh Minlin, a great partner who I work with here at Chaikin Analytics. Um, we're here to spend uh, the next hour or so going through the stock market to talk about those hidden opportunities. Um, Mark mentioned that a lot of the content you're going to see this afternoon is based on feedback, comments, frequent questions that we hear from investors of various different types, people managing longer term positions, people managing swing trades. Well, ultimately what we're going to do today is we're going to go through and help you find uh, essentially the, the direction, uh, the confidence that's necessary in order to find those hidden winners. Winners. So we're really excited to get into it here for today. So, and again, uh, thanks for joining us. Remember, uh, we are recording today's presentation. So if you'd like to check out the content later on, uh, we'll be sending out a recording tomorrow. Um, and throughout the session, uh, these webinars usually go best when we have a lot of interaction with our audience. Um, I know it's a little awkward being on a webinar right now, but it's always great to hear um, you know, a little back and forth. So we're gonna be utilizing our Q&A window, which you'll be able to access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. So just look for the little icon that says Q&A. Um, and again, throughout the session, if you have any questions, if uh, anything regarding the content that we're addressing, feel free to go ahead and type in at any point. We'll be more than happy to uh, respond back to you. So uh, with that said, let's get started. Um, I mentioned that we're going to focus on finding uh, those hidden opportunities and we're going to help uh, with timing. Now, I'm sure right now we're all picturing a variety of different stocks. Um, a lot of big names like Tesla, like Apple, Amazon, a lot of those big name stocks are always getting attention. And what we tend to find that Josh and I, we don't always see uh, some of these lesser known names being spoken about. Uh, NACO, SkyWest, Quad Graphics, these aren't exactly household names. So when we talk about hidden gems, hidden stocks, um, what we're really talking about um, are some of the names that you see here. And again, I would imagine um, if you're familiar with some of the names or maybe if you're somebody who hasn't heard of any of these stocks, can you go ahead and chat in right now? Tell us a little bit about what you're thinking, if these are familiar names to you or not. Um, the great thing, if you're not familiar with these, you're really going to enjoy uh, the tool, the, the platform that we're going to be demonstrating this afternoon, really helping you find really those hidden winners. The biggest solution that you're really going to find is that we're going to help eliminate the mystery of the market. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of uh, gray area about the market. There's so many different sources. We're going to talk about information overload in a few minutes. Um, but really, the biggest thing is helping you figure out the mystery of the market, the how, the what, the when, You know, alluding to timing here. Um, so what we're really going to identify is how you can find top performing stocks just like this. Now it's a whole process of pinpointing, all right? So being able to identify these stocks quickly and easily, all right? Now there's a trick to this here, and I think what you really have got to understand before you uh, start your process is, you know, there's a reason why we should be in the stock market. And there's a reason why we should really be taking confidence into the overall market. Um, everybody looks up to Warren Buffett for a variety of different reasons. And, you know, I think Warren says it best, from 1950 all the way through 2009, if you adjust the S&P 500, account for dividends, inflation and such, you're looking at an annual return of 7%. And that's something you don't get anywhere else. 
Um, I don't think anybody here is really going to volunteer and say that the bond market is where you can go for safety. You know, it's still a little, um, uh, a little just out of the question at this point. So there's really a pretty convincing argument for why you should still be looking in stocks. Now, there's a reason why I like this quote, and I want to tell you a little bit about my background. Now, I joined Shaken Analytics from the Vanguard Group, and I would imagine, uh, I know that's a pretty common name here. So buying and holding is really my specialty. This is what I really bring to the table here at Shaken Analytics, looking for long opportunities. Now, we're not just indexing the market like at Vanguard. We're really looking for, the, again, the hidden winners, those top performing stocks. And we're also going to leave out those laggards, the stocks that aren't really propping up your portfolio. In fact, they're probably drawing down your overall performance. So we're gonna specialize in broad analysis, but also in stock selection uh, and obviously sector analysis as well, helping you find the strongest areas of the market, not just the strongest stocks, but the strongest areas. Now, the great thing about working at Chaken Analytics, again, is I'm taking more of a hands-on role uh, with the individuals who use our program. Um, again, we have a variety of different investors and traders, and one of the great things that I enjoy about my role here at Chaken Analytics um, is really hearing the challenges that you encounter, but also providing solutions with Chaken Analytics being that trick. So um, again, I'm really excited to share with you a lot of the, the best of, uh, I guess you could reference, um, for the group sessions that we host here at Chaken, for the one-on-one -on -one sessions that we host, um, and you're really going to be ahead of the game when it comes to figuring out the mystery of the market. Um, now, like I mentioned, um, I'm here with one of uh, my great colleagues in the office, Josh Midland. Josh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Very excited to be here with Joe and Joe. We work uh, every day together, but we don't get to do this every day together, so it's special for us. I come from a place called Online Trading Academy. I've spent a number of years there. I've been trained by some of the top traders, market makers, fund managers, guys like Mark Chapin. What excited me about? You were you were, you were on muted. Good to go. I'm good to go. All right. Hi everybody. I'm I'm not great with this webinar stuff, so you'll bear with me. But I got great information for you, so it's going to be fun. Uh, now, I uh, I come from a place called Online Trading Academy. I was trained by some uh, top institutional traders, market makers, fund managers, guys with with a lot of Wall Street experience. Guys like Mark. It was one of the great things uh, about coming here is being able to keep working with someone with that kind of experience. I've coached people in all kinds of markets. Uh, I have a passion for the options markets. I know I noticed uh, some of the people watching today I've spoken to about just that. So it's uh, good to see you on. I know just a couple on here I actually have some calls upcoming with you. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, so that's a little bit about my background, and I'm looking forward to showing you a little bit about what we talk about and what I'll be talking about with some of the people on today next week. So let's uh, let's get going. Awesome. Um, Josh and I have been working together for several months now, and you know I mentioned that um, I'm really going to be emphasizing a lot of the stock selection points throughout our session today. Um, but something that I've really learned from Josh, uh, especially, is uh, when it comes to timing. Right, identifying the, the right point to get into a stock. Um, we're gonna look at a lot of bullish rated stocks. Um, John, Josh mentioned he's, he's very experienced when it comes to trading options. So we're gonna look at some bearish stocks today as well that you can profit from. Um, but in both cases, identifying timing is such a difficult task uh, when you're doing it on your own, when you're trying to figure this out yourself. Um, so timing, I think is gonna be something that we're pretty excited to talk about today. And, in addition to timing, these are some of the other challenges that we come across. And uh, again, I'm really looking for some great participation. I saw a few people mentioned they weren't familiar with the stocks earlier, but going through this list here, fear of loss, fear of the overall market, uh, trading on emotion, a lack of confidence. If, if any one of these bullet points here resonates with you, if this is a challenge that you're encountering right now, just by a show of uh, virtual hands, I guess you could say, go ahead and just type in the word yes, if, if you can relate to any one of these, maybe go ahead and specify one. Um, Josh and I obviously like to uh, customize these presentations as best as possible when it comes to uh, content that people want to see. Um, so maybe it's information overload. Maybe you're looking at so many different sources. Maybe you have a, a list of perhaps 50 stocks in your watch list and it's just too many to really um, kind of grasp. Maybe you're having a hard time sorting out one by one. Um, and then, or maybe it could be a challenge I was just citing, uh, just simply uh, knowing when to get in and when to get out. These are all very common things. And again, um, 
it's perfectly okay if this is a challenge that you're facing. These are legitimate challenges. Um, the thing about this, though, is that I think the main lesson, you can't really go it alone. I think that's one of the biggest lessons I especially learned. Um, so really, having a, a tool that can assist you with this process is something that's going to go a long way. So, um, and I'm looking at the chat box right now. I'm seeing a lot of uh, responses come through. Um, seeing a lot of yeses, kind of suggesting uh, all of the above, information overload, getting in and getting out. Um, and again, they're, they're, like I mentioned, there's, I know it, it, nobody likes to point out their own flaws or their own uh, challenges, but these are all legitimate challenges. Um, and again, there, there's a reason why so many people do encounter these. So, all right, so specifically, let's go ahead and talk about um, what we're going to go through today. Uh, I mentioned we're going to uh, some bits and pieces about what we're going to cover. Um, but the solution, the solutions to the problems we just looked at, um, you're looking at a methodology, discipline, strategy. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one sessions that Josh and I have, I, I'm willing to bet probably 80% of them involve discipline, doing the same things each time and being able to track your results. If you're not doing the same thing, if you're not following the same methodology, how can you identify what you need to improve on? You won't be able to identify what's really lagging down the performance of your stock um, or portfolio, whatever it might be. So establishing a methodology is very, very important to us. Um, second thing is knowing what to buy, right? There's, I mentioned we rattled off a number of different stocks earlier. These are all really, um, there's for no shortage of options out there. And even in Chaken Analytics, we have plenty of bullish rated stocks, but how can you cipher through and identify which ones to go with? So we're going to cover that today. Um, my favorite, really, this is, uh, I'm really excited to go over the, the third section here, strong stocks in a strong industry group, right? Uh, go with the best of the best. Again, going back to shaking, uh, back when I was at Vanguard, um, a, lot, a lot of index funds, uh, a lot of the mutual funds we'd be looking at. Just take the S&P 500 mutual fund. Um, you know, a lot of people had have a hand in it. However, I can't help but when I was working there, just thinking, you know what, not all of these are appropriate for growth. Um, and there's gotta be a way to identify them. So we're gonna show you how you can identify the best of the best using industry groups. Um, that'll also be a great way to help you find opportunities. Um, from that point, again, uh, stocks that might not be good for a long position, right? Wrong for long. We're going to look at opportunities that you can short, look for opportunities that you can buy puts on. And of course, we're going to wrap everything up by nailing down timing, right? Knowing when to buy, when to sell, when they get in, when to get out, when to close your options, options position, whatever it might end up being that you're doing. So, all right. Introducing the solution that we're looking at here. This, of course, is Shaken Analytics. Um, if you haven't been on one of our webinars before, um, this is a desktop product and iPad app um, that's available. That what we're going to do is we're going to use this to identify the rating of individual stocks. We have a few technical charts that we're going to use today, uh, but most importantly, we're going to be able to settle on a nice winning group of stocks here. Um, this can be the solution to a lot of the challenges that we've experienced so far. Um, now I'm going to let Josh go ahead and explain to us really what is the first step to that disciplined approach that we mentioned. Yeah, Joe's so right. Having a methodology that you trust and that works for you is is paramount. It's it's so important. I feel, uh, and I've seen it over and over and over again. The people that I talk to that have a methodology that works for them, the way that they're style is, their risk tolerance, their, their uh, capital size, having that methodology is, is so critical, I think, to long-term success in the market. One of the things I really like about Shaken Analytics is it's a proven methodology. I mean, we've got We've got numbers on it. The power gauge is a forward-looking indicator. I'm sure there are people on this uh, that use indicators. A lot of them are backwards-looking, uh, and they, they help to, to show you the future. But this is really a, a purely forward-looking indicator. So let's, uh, let's get into it a little more. It, it's, it's not simplistic. There's, a, there's a, a nice algorithm that goes behind it, but what Mark has done, which is really fabulous, is he's taken it and he's make it simple for people. Here you can see the 20 metrics that Mark arrived to. Uh, he did not just pick these out of thin air. These were, you know, he, he leveraged his experience and he, he worked with people who were able to put together an algorithm uh, that works. And, and these are the 20 metrics that he came to that are the best for predicting the future. So how is it a forward-looking indicator? Well, let's take a look um, at, the, at what it does. What it does is it tells you what is likely, it's back-tested, 
to make sure that it's still working, but it tells you what is likely to outperform or underperform, whether it's bearish or bullish in the future. And it's back tested on a one to six month time frame. So for shorter term, for longer term, it, it matches well with both. And it gives you, as you can see, these are some of the, uh, on the screen, you can see some of the uh, indexes that we put together using the Chaikin power gauge rating system. All of them outperformed, some of them by incredible margins. So I, I think that's very important to, to note. Yeah, I wanted to chime in here regarding these NASDAQ benchmarks. You know, when Mark identified those 20 factors that that, um, that that Josh just mentioned, you know, not only are we selecting 20 factors, but we're, of course, balancing one against another. So developing the actual formula, the algorithm is quite a process. And, of course, making sure that it works as a whole is the most important thing here. So when Mark partnered with NASDAQ, this is one of the most convincing factors that led me to really partner with Mark and say that I need to be a part of this project. So again, when you talk about taking an index, right, just a basic NASDAQ benchmark for large cap, small cap, or dividends, um, essentially what we're doing here is we're knocking out some of those neutral rated stocks, those bearish rated stocks, those stocks that really aren't convincing us that there's much growth potential here. Um, and you can see the, uh, the, re the, the return uh, based on uh, the NASDAQ, uh, the Chaikin focused NASDAQ index here. Yeah, and that uh, the the fact that Nasdaq was willing to partner uh, with with Mark and with Chaikin Analytics, I think, speaks for itself. It speaks volumes. I don't know uh, how many out there are able to partner with Nasdaq. I don't I don't know if they would take my call, but they certainly took Mark's, and uh, they were happy, as you can see, why happy to be able to to have these. So uh, we're we're very proud of that, and I think it speaks volumes about what we have here in the Chaikin Analytics Power Gauge rating. And there you can see that it's used by uh, various pros, it's in the media. All, all this is is absolutely what I expected given uh, Mark's experience and the wonderful tool that we have here available for individual investors and and for uh, for people that manage money professionally. Yeah, it's always nice to see a lot of the partners using the program. Um, having some a tool that works that's relevant but to the fact that it's also being an advantage to other groups is really important to us um 2016 was a was a banner year for the company um and one of the great partnerships that we were able to make was with john carter who I'm, I'm sure some of you may perhaps would be um um would be um uh, uh subscribers to a lot of his content here um so not only i, I want to make sure this is clear that not only is this tool appropriate for longer term management but it's also excellent for short-term purposes as well which is what john carter's program uh, specializes in so it's great to have a variety of partners john carter's group though uh, was an excellent addition um, in 2016. so all right so let's get into some of the details here I'm seeing a lot of questions coming through in the chat room just uh, in reference to uh, what are some of the most, uh, which, what should I be looking at? And that's obviously a really important process. So we're going to use the power gauge rating here to first identify stocks. And then we're going to get into some of the details as well. Because I know there's a number of different uh, factors. Uh, some of these indications might look familiar to some of you. Um, so let's go in and uh, let's really talk about really um, what some of those factors are that we want that we want to utilize when we're anticipating short-term momentum. Um, so the power gauge rating is, is going to lead the way. This I like to think of this as a GPS for stocks. I know Mark mentions that a lot, but it's really good. Um, it's a really good comparison. It really is a GPS that's telling you what direction to follow. Um, we are going to focus here on strength of industry group. We want to make sure that stocks like the one we're looking at are also in a strong uh, condition. Uh, so we want to be in good company. We're going to jump down to Chaikin Money Flow, so institutional behavior, which I'm sure, again, you've probably seen Chaikin Money Flow in a variety of different formats on different programs. So a lot of us are familiar with Money Flow. And we'll dive into relative strength. I love relative strength because it tells me whether the power gauge rating is doing its job or not. It tells me whether these stocks are actually beating the market and, and uh, again, pointing me in the right direction. So, um, all right, first stock I wanted to take a look at is BRKS. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with the trend of looking at stocks that maybe not everybody's too familiar with. This is a pretty small cap stock here, um, but it's in the technology sector, which is um, in in good shape, right? It's uh, in better than most uh, sectors out there, and I'll talk more about that later on. But uh, obviously, small caps uh, one of the best places to be lately. So BRKS is great when overall, again, the power gauge rating here uh, very very bullish. Now we're gonna talk about the information that you see in the charts here, but just to remember, I wanted to take a moment to highlight, here are those four main categories. And I know we talked about 20 different 
factors, but four categories um, summarizing all that information. And so with that said, financials, earnings, technicals, and experts, all of this in great shape. And what we're doing here is we're using the program to assist us with uh, identifying entry points. Um, you're seeing on the page right now, these are some of our buy signals. Um, we have a variety of different buy and sell signals on our program to help you get in, but also help you get out. Um, so what we're looking at is back here on the June, July timeframe, where if you look at the bottom of the page, this is a time when the power gauge rating for the stock started turning bullish. So I had the guidance of the power gauge rating here in very, very good shape, and it tells me this stock is likely to start outperforming. And when you look at relative strength here, I can start to see the stock beginning to, again, outperform the market. Uh, relative strength is great. Anytime it's turning green, it's beating the market. Anytime it's red, it's underperforming the market. Um, so um, from that point, again, the stock's starting to outperform the market. Um, and of course, shake and money flow, behavior of larger institutions. Are they beating the market or, pardon me, are they buying a stock? Or are they starting to sell out of the stock? Um, in this case, you had a lot of great momentum leading up to the point where, again, you see a nice buy signal here and look at the behavior following that point. So stocks continue again, whether you're making a short-term swing trade, getting in when oversold or getting out when overbought, you can see the move here. If you're sticking with the stock, again, I know it was tough sledding toward the third quarter, uh, but eventually you do break out into new highs. Um, so if you missed the opportunity before, that's fine. More buy signals helping you identify the right point to get in on the stock. Um, so again, another nice buy signal here and note that it was right before the election. So again, if you're feeling pretty optimistic uh, prior to the election, which I know not everybody was, um, but certainly uh, you would have been guided to a nice growth opportunity here with BRKS. So definitely what we would term as a classic bull stock in really, really good shape. Um, and so again, not a whole lot of surprise here. The stock ended up doing pretty well. Um, next example here is NMIH. So again, another really small stock, a really small cap stock, but again, wonderful growth opportunity. Uh, if you've been watching the Russell 2000, you know that a lot of the action has been in small caps. So a lot of these names that really aren't household names, but doing very, very well. And again, you're aided by the buy signals, right? In this case, we're looking at oversold buy signals. I love these. If you're a swing trader, you're going to love them too. Overbought, oversold is really going to be a solution when it comes to a uh, timing. So again, we're looking at a case where the stock back around a year ago, neutral rating. If I see a stock with a neutral rating, it immediately tells me it's a better opportunity somewhere else. Um, right now, I'm showing you some stocks that are in good shape, but uh, what I'm really interested in is where I can head going forward. Power gauge rating becomes bullish, relative strength starting to improve, and ultimately you can see where the stock ends up a couple months later after the stock ends up doing well. Um, so with that said, again, buy signal here, eventually you can see the stock end up doing pretty well. Um, and again, you're maintaining the growth and you're not, if you want to take profits at a point like here toward the, um, end of August, maybe a few, like a month or so before the, a couple months before the election, that's fine. But if you stay in there as well, because you still have the bullish power gauge rating, again, you can continue to expect growth here. No shortage of buy signals. Again, ultimately you're going on your way and doing very well. Today, we look at the stock, NMIH, still maintains a very uh, a bullish rating for financials, very bullish for earnings, technical experts. Um, again, the stock's just taking off. So another great classic bull example here. Um, question here from Tony who mentions, uh, what are the EPS references here? Um, now, we're right on the cusp of earnings season. In fact, Mark uh, uh, pretty much identified this week as the informal start of uh, earnings season. What we're looking at right now is a great way to pick up on opportunities for earnings. You can see in the past how NMIH reacted following earnings. So again, uh, in this case, I know this, um, you can see all four opportunities in the past here. EPS is written in green font, telling you that the stock outperformed expectations. And when you see that the rating for earnings here is very bullish, that doesn't come as a surprise to us. So, all right, I have a few more classic bulls here, but um, I'm pretty excited. We, we made a, uh, a few moments, we made a, actually a, a last second audible to do a live demonstration here. So if it's okay with you guys, if you saw from the past two examples that a lot of this was making sense, do me a favor real quick, just type in the word yes, just to see if that's, uh, if that's all kind of coming through, if that makes sense. So if you can see the, the strength of some of these stocks here, again, I have BRKS, NMIH. If all this makes sense, you can see the momentum, you can see the guidance of the signals here. Uh, awesome, good. I'm seeing a lot of uh, yeses coming through. So um, I had a couple other classic bull examples here. Goldman Sachs, um, a nice pre-election buy signal here, just to show you that you know we're not just showboating a lot of the front runners. Um, and again, another example here for Zion Bank Corp, more financial stocks with signals before the election. So these are some really good examples that we wanted to make sure that we were able to share. So, um, all right. So, getting into industry 
group relative strength. This is one of my favorite favorite topics. This is really something that took the mystery out of the market when I when I started working with Mark. Um, so industry group relative strength, what we're doing here is again, we're focusing on the best of the best, right? Um, I see uh, there, were a, there was a request here for JP Morgan too, because I just showed a few financial stocks. And again, you're, you're heading on the right track. Um, strength of the market, strength of stocks, right? So what's leading the way? Well, Chaken Analytics makes it very, very easy to be able to see the condition of, of different industry groups. So what you're looking at right now is a portion of the 64 different industry groups available in the program. Now, 64 is a little overwhelming. We do consolidate it. We make it a lot easier for you by looking at some sector ETFs. But uh, the main benefit here, regardless of which way you go, is you're able to see which sectors have the greatest correlation of bulls versus bears. And again, it just makes our job a lot, lot easier. We also have a screener here that you can screen through a lot of these stocks for. So it's not as if you have to go one by one, especially if you're looking at a big group like banks and thrips. So let's go into the financial sector a bit here. Um, we were just looking at the large array of, of, um, of uh, specific industry groups. What I'm interested in right now, though, I want to go into the overall financial sector, right? Now, I mentioned technology earlier. We looked at a tech stock. The reason why I wanted to focus on that group is because it's a group with 19 bulls and three bears. Financials in better shape, right? 38 stocks with great bullish potential to continue outperforming the market. USB was a stock that came up today um, during my pre-market session. So I mentioned I host a variety of group sessions. Um, twice a week, we host pre-market analysis webinars. Those happen before uh, the market opens. Um, and we look at some opportunities. Today, I was interested in USB because the stock here triggered a relative strength buy signal. Right? So again, this was taken this morning. And so when I'm looking at this stock, again, pretty much everything lines up. Money flow is in, not in good condition, but um, I'm really concerned about this longer portion of uh, negative money flow uh, if I was actually concerned about the stock. Obviously, you're not nearly close to that point. So everything else is lining up very nicely, and I'm getting a buy signal, so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so this is a great example of looking for an individual stock that triggered a buy signal within a very strong group. Now, what I want to do is I want to get into that live demonstration that I mentioned. So bear with me for a moment. I want to go ahead and switch over to my Chicken Analytics program. Let's see. I just need to get a little technical here. All right, let me try this again. And we're going to go to our desktop. And all right, so I'm going to pull up our new shiny toy. So Chicken Analytics got a wonderful uh, Christmas present. And what I'm showing you right now is our new uh, Chicken uh, Discovery Engine. So this is really the, the most impressive uh, feature we've ever released with Chaken Analytics, aside from the power gauge rating itself. So what this tool here, this, these list of stocks, what this is gonna help you do is that this is gonna set you up very nicely to find stocks like USB, like JP Morgan, like whatever bullish stock that you might be interested in. Um, if you have used Netflix, if you've used um, uh, Spotify for music, uh, this is the Spotify. This is the Netflix for finding stock opportunities. All right. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and type in USB. And real quick, just by a show of hands, just uh, let me know if you can see this. If you can, uh, I just want to make sure that, uh, uh, again, there's always a lot of technical bugs that get in the way. But if you don't mind just typing in yes, just to make sure you can see my discovery engine. All right, cool. I see Rick said yes. Richard said yes. All right, cool. Good, good. All right, so what we're looking at right now, I'm going to go and pull my drawing tools. Um, what we're looking at are a variety of different lists based on what stands out to us most about USB. Now, USB had that buy signal today, but it's also part of a really strong industry group, right? We like that. It's in great shape. It is a large cap, which is doing fine. It's got very strong earnings consist consistency, right? So we mentioned we're in earnings season, right? So that's really important to me right now. And the stock's trading at, at or near its new high, but Again, that's just one of the main technicals that stand out to us about the stock right now. So I'm okay with going in on it. Now, what would this is going to do for me? You might be noticing a lot of financial names up here. JP Morgan, right? I mentioned that earlier. Bank of America, uh, Comerica here. All of these stocks listed here have a lot of the similar qualities like USB, right? So right off the bat, I have five stocks here, very similar to USB. All you can see very bullish power gauge ratings um, and all have that great growth potential. Now, for those of you who are swing trading, right, the beauty of trading options, you can benefit in both directions. So let's say we're looking for something that you can bet against. Well, in this case, you're going to find the equal opposite. You're going to 
pretty much take a mirror and you're going to shine it right against the stock. And you're going to see the opposite here, very bearish stocks that you can bet against and then buy puts on, right? Now, obviously that's given a certain market condition, but nonetheless, you're still finding opportunities for a variety of different scenarios. Um, Wrapping up here, you can see the other two bullet points, strong earnings consistency at or near new high. Now we've spoken a lot about financials already today. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna jump down to this list here for similar technicals. And I'm looking for stocks that are in good shape like USB, but I'm looking for a different industry group. So here we're looking at Alaska Air, we're looking at SunTrust, we're looking at uh, SANM. What I wanna do here is I wanna take a look at Alaska Air. So let me go ahead and double click on Alaska here. And when I look at Alaska Air, I'm seeing a lot of great opportunities. Um, first things first, when I look at the stock, I really hadn't been interested, and in, I know it did pretty well here following the election, but I wasn't interested in the stock because it didn't have a bullish power gauge rating. That's a concern with me. There are too many cases back here uh, where the stock uh, is neutral, but its relative strength is good, but then it doesn't keep up the momentum. Here, it's a different ball game because I can see that the stock recently turned bullish, when I look at the factors that drive the stock, right? Uh, financials are in the middle of the pack, but earnings, technicals, and experts are all in great shape. This is a convincing, very bullish stock here. From that point, again, shaking money flow, take a look at the recent trend. I know money flow right now, uh, you're seeing some distribution from number of stocks in the market, but look at the transition that it went through in the past. Notice how you had more selling, but now you're having more and more buying behavior, and that's perfectly fine with me. Certainly, it's nothing like what you were witnessing back in May, June, and July, right when the stock was breaking down. So again, the power gauge rating not really fooling, uh, not being fooled in this case. So you've got great relative strength. The stock's in a nice oversold position right now, and the stock's pretty much telling you, yes, I'm at a 12-month high here, but I'm expecting the stock to continue making new highs. And again, that's all because the power gauge rating remains bullish. Now, this probably draws questions of when do I look to exit this stock? Well, we're going to get into that later on in the webinar. Um, but I just want to emphasize right now just how easy it is, just how quick and consolidated, right? We mentioned uh, one of the first slides is about being able to pinpoint and identify great opportunities. Um, well, using an example like USB to find different stocks here um, is just a, a wonderful way to zero in and pinpoint a number of these stocks. So. All right, I want to go back to my presentation here. So again, bear with me. Um, I like to tell myself I'm technically sound, but or technologically sound, but uh, sometimes you never know. Um, but let's go ahead and let's pull back my program here. Bear with me for just a second. All right, so I think you can see my presentation again right now. All right, cool. All right, um, so Josh and I, again, we, we work with a number of different investors. And uh, the key thing is, you know, we, we're talking about a lot of challenges right now, but most importantly, we're really uh, emphasizing solutions here. And really the only way to know if these solutions are working for people like yourselves, like you, um, is to actually hear back from you. And so getting responses like we got from Jim is really, really important. Um, ultimately, I, I know August of 2015 was a pretty rough one. Um, oil pretty much fell apart. A lot of stocks fell apart behind that. We went through a pretty nasty correction. We eventually came back, obviously, but um, ultimately the important thing is what Jim mentions here is that you're, you're looking for an advantage. How can you see a correction like we saw in the middle of 2015 coming? Um, so when we got a response here back from, uh, from Jim, pretty much telling us the simple, uh, the system here really tells you what to do, focuses on opportunities, and you get to see a nice 16% return. Remember, Warren Buffett's saying you average 7%. Well, in Jim's case, who's buying and holding, you're looking at 16%. It's not too bad. Um, so it's really nice to be singled out here along with Mark as well as the rest of the team here. Um, so these emails are really, um, really a great source just to make sure that everything is still going well with our users and um, ultimately uh, having an advantage in the market. So timing is a big one here. We're going to really focus more on this concept of timing. This is very, very important here. Um, Cheryl chatted in earlier, individual investor and trader. Not enough time in the day to do work, uh, but Chaken Analytics uh, really summarizes all of that down into minutes, right? So just uh, being able to really drill down the amount of time that you're spending in the market. So I mentioned we're going to go ahead and talk about some selling opportunities. When do I, when do I get out of an opportunity here? Now, if a stock is bullish, then I'm expecting growth. And I mentioned there were opportunities where stock was neutral. So that's, uh, I'm not really convinced of the growth potential there. Well, when I see that bullish stock turn neutral or even bearish, right, it turns negative, that's when I'm looking to uh, uh, pick up and move somewhere else. Nothing wrong with a mercenary's con uh, 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 mindset when you're in the market, right? 
you're looking for where the opportunity is. If it's not there, you're packing up and going somewhere else. That's the name of the game here. So um, quad graphics, perfect example that I wanted to highlight here today. Uh, quad graphics in this case, stock that again, very consistent, bullish power gauge rating. We saw quad at the beginning of the program here, bullish power gauge rating. Notice what happens with here with relative strength. The, starts, the stock starts beating the SPY, beats the overall market. A lot of consistent shaking money flow here. A lot of buy signals telling you to get in. Um, and ultimately, the stock eventually finds its top, makes a double top here. Power gauge rating starts saying, you know what, it's time to start looking for the exit point. And eventually, the stock makes its final buildup. You're getting out when the stock is overbought, right? You can see more and more negative money flow, a lot of selling taking place leading up to the election, um, but then ultimately you're gapping down and failing to make new highs. So the power gauge rating, again, number one thing here, if anybody's wondering what's the most important piece of this program, power gauge rating, no question about it. Should I get back into quad graphics right now? No, there are plenty of other bullish opportunities, plenty of other great growth opportunities here uh, with stocks that have a bullish or a very bullish rating. Quad graphics, it's done its job. You've gone from about, looks like about $10 here up to about 26. More than 100% return in less than a year. I'll take that any day of the week and then you're on to the next opportunity. Um, I'm sure a lot of us watch CNBC. Uh, we have it on the office here. And you know, there's plenty of good content on here, but I don't think anybody can beat the market just by you know watching the news or, or reading any kind of periodical here. At least not one in particular. Um, and so Mark and I were, coming up with some, idea, some ideas for the webinar today, and we were kind of going back and forth, and um, Mark said, yeah, look at the TV. Look, they're talking about Coca-Cola and to talk about P&G. Um, does anybody care to share, by a show of hands, um, Coca-Cola here? Uh, anybody know what happened to Coca-Cola today? This, this wasn't even on Tuesday. Um, ultimately, I guess the answer's on the screen here. Uh, you got downgraded for a lot of these stocks here, um, Coca-Cola and P&G. Um, now, this was this week, right? So if you're paying attention this week, you would have found these stocks. Um, Chicken Analytics, though, uh, we were telling you months ago to get out Coca-Cola, all right? So again, uh, industry groups are helping you find the strength, but also helping you identify the weakness. And when you look at the bottom of the pack, right, we were t we've been talking about financials and technology today. Well, if you're looking all the way at the bottom here, you'll find consumer staples, and that's exactly where you'll find Coca-Cola, as well as p and I don't have p and in here because we have a lot to get to, uh, but Coca-Cola here, Stocks had a bearish power gauge rating for several months, right? Nobody's caught off guard here. Relative strength, very, very poor, continuing to break down. Shaking money flow, breaking down. There's a lot of cases, right? We're talking about scenarios that people find themselves in where they're holding on to a Coca-Cola or something like it, and they're saying, well, you know, fingers crossed it'll come back. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a discipline, all right? Um, hope is not going to do you very well in the stock market. And so for Coca-Cola's case, again, you're seeing stocks further and further below. Again, a lot of these sweet sugary drinks, we're, we're based in Philadelphia um, and Philadelphia just enacted a, a sugar tax for beverages, right? So those are just some of the things that are piling up for a stock like Coca-Cola. When you have something like the power gauge rating, right? Working against or helping you identify the weakness. Look at the stock across the board here, financials, earnings, technicals, and experts. This is taking the mystery out of the market here. So not only in Coca-Cola here, but also down in the overall sector. So um, no surprise here. It's always nice to be ahead of the news. So many opportunities where we're saying, hey, they're talking about on CNBC. Well, you know, it was in our program several months ago. So always nice to be ahead. All right. So this is a great opportunity for us to start talking about some bearish plays, classic bears. I'm going to let Josh take the mic from here and not just identify opportunities to exit, but quite frankly, it's going to benefit from a downturn. Josh? Yeah, so we look at uh, classic bears. We have certain characteristics that we look for. You can see them on the screen, downtrending stocks, poor money flow, poor relative strength, of course, uh, bearish power gauge rating. And I don't, um, I don't want to spend too much time on these examples because I really want to show you exactly how I found some opportunities as I was prepping for the webinar. So you can see uh, the the uh, CMG at the top. That's been a, a wonderful bear. It's had multiple, multiple opportunities for you for puts, for shorting, for playing the downside in that stock. So I'm going to show you some similar things like that. Uh, 
let's go and here's Chipotle uh, it blown up for you so you can see it. Nike, another good one. You can see the signals on there. I'll talk to that a little bit more in a moment. What I want to do though real quick is, and bear with me if you will, um, I'm going to go and share my screen. So you should be looking at my screener and it's blank. I have a couple of pre-canned screens that I run all the time. They're easy. I help people set these up constantly through one-on-ones. And uh, Joe does this as well when he's in his sessions and one-on-ones. So I'm just going to click on this little button. I'm going to load my screen. You can see what I have on there. I even keep Joe's screen on there. For those of you that follow Sandy, I have Sandy's screen. I'm going to go to my bear swing. One click, everything populates. Second click. I've got a nice list of stocks. You, can you see yourself doing that, right? Working with us, setting up a nice and easy screen, pre-canned it, done. Think about how much time that would save you. Now, I've got a list of stocks here. I'm going to save the list. There's a little save list button in the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to click on it. And I'm just going to call this Bear Swing. And I'm going to give it a date. So we're just going to give it today's date. And now I've saved this list so I can reference it over and over again. I'm going to go to my workspace. Now I've already done some of the prep work for this, so I'm not going to go over all of these. I look for very specific setups for myself. I uh, work with people to help them understand uh, what would fit with their uh, risk tolerance and their goals. So for me, I took a look at this list and I identified, and it also had a signal on it as well today, DEO, which is a in a beverage, it's in a weak industry. You see in the top right corner here, weak industry group, right? Poor power gauge rating, poor relative strength. We are overbought based on Mark's overbought, oversold uh, stochastics at the bottom. Terrible relative strength, terrible relative strength, and the overbought sell signal indicates that for you. In fact, one of the things that you'll see is we have some negative divergence here. Price has gone up, money flow hasn't. That's that's part of the directional timing that you can get from shaking analytics. We're overbought, we're close to the upper band. You'll see that we had another one recently right here, excellent opportunities. Now, I took this and I thought, I wonder what it would look like for the options. Took a quick look at the options. I didn't like the spread on the options. So what did I do? I went and I put it in our discovery tool. This thing is fabulous. I, mean, I it, it, This is amazing what the discovery tool does for you. You can see I was looking at JP Morgan that came up on my bullish uh, swing trade scan and there's some other examples up there. I'm going to put in DEO, simple click, and it's going to populate with a bunch of ideas. Again, I already went through a couple of these. You can just put them right into a list by clicking on stocks like this. I identified PepsiCo. Similar price. They're both around 100 bucks. If that's uh, a bit much for some people in terms of, of options premium, it's great. You have some lower priced examples in here as well. So I click on PepsiCo. And another opportunity. Now, a little early, I wouldn't want to get in here personally, but I would look for our oscillator to rise back up, price to bump up here, just like we had the setup previously, where you can see the red down triangle. That's one of our overbought, oversold indicators, uh, signals, right? We're up at the upper band. We're up against the long term trend line, which is rolling over. We're in a weak industry, a weak trend. This is a this is a perfect setup right here for the for my style for the Josh style of uh, trading. So I'm going to wait for that setup again. And I clicked on the options play button. It gives me some great options examples right off the bat. I took a look at the the vertical, uh, and that's just something that I keep on a little little watch list. You can see in my list my user list over here. I have a little watch list, so I just added to my watch list, and I'm going to keep an eye on PepsiCo looking for the right setup. This is, this is the methodology that, that we were talking about earlier, having a set of checklist, really, 
I just go through a checklist, a shaken checklist of sorts, where I just go through a couple of things. I can glance at this uh, workspace really quickly and identify where am I wanting to get in? Where do I want to get out? For a swing trader like myself, uh, I have very specific rules. I'm looking to get in close to that upper band when we're overbought, and I'm gonna take it down to the lower band when we're oversold. It takes a couple of weeks, and it's pretty good. I like it. Uh, I think that if you can see yourself doing that, you know, please, please let me know. These are things that I talk about with others as well. So feel free to to chime in uh, and and let us know. I meant to I meant to ask earlier how many how many people here are are actively trading options right now? Maybe in the swing trade capacity, or maybe if you're lining up, um, if you're looking to line up some earnings trades, you know, if if that's the position you're in, um, you know, this is. Definitely the kind of content that we're speaking to. Definitely in the case for swing trades, absolutely. Earnings, of course, earlier we we, you know, we highlighted the earnings opportunities, the earnings ratings. Um, you can see the earnings date in the header, just like uh, just on Josh's screen there. So if you're swing trading and you don't want to get, you don't want to trade on earnings, you know, you, you'll be aware of that date before it hits. Uh, maybe you can wait until after the earnings day or earnings play. And then um, after that, obviously, or, or if you want to directly go after an earnings trade, um, certainly there are screens for that as well. I saw there was a question earlier, um, you know, how come a screen just for swing trades? Um, we can create screens for a variety of different profiles. If you're looking for a, a speculative long position, if you want to focus just on those small caps that we were looking at earlier, you know, we can set up a screen for that as well. So uh, the great thing about it is if, if for as specific or perhaps as general as your investment approach is, uh, we can customize the program as easy uh, as easily as you'd like. So, um, and again, that's all part of the support program. Remember what Josh and I do here um, each day at Chicken Analytics. We're working directly with users, um, so it's not as if what's going on here with Chicken Analytics is that you can have access to it and you can figure it out yourself. Um, there's really no need to reinvent the wheel at all. I mentioned earlier that we do pre-market analysis webinars. Um, we also do options analysis webinars. We did one today all part of Chicken Analytics subscriptions, um, just uh, focusing on earnings opportunities. We came up with a screener used just for uh, finding earnings. Um, so these are all great interactive opportunities to work with, to work with everybody here. Um, Discovery Engine, for example, was uh, our most recent topic in our open forum. So a lot of great opportunities. And I know what, I saw somebody chatted in there on Australia right now, which brings up the whole conversation of uh, uh, time zones. We record all of our support webinars. So uh, whether you attend them live, whether, which is great because you can do Q&A just like we're doing today, um, or if perhaps you're still working a full-time job or you have other commitments, um, you're going to be able to get the support content through one method or another. So a lot of great, uh, a lot of great uh, support. I'd like to believe that we have here. So yeah, I, it would, exactly what Joe was saying is is spot on. I set up a, a bearish screen that I like based on my personality, my risk tolerance, my my age, my account size, what I think is a uh, will yield good results for my style. And, and Joe and I work with people to help them put together screens that work for their style. And you can see on mine, I have a number of pre preloaded screens and it's real simple. In the morning, I click on my, my preloaded screen. It puts the criteria in there. I hit the screen button. I get a neat little list. I go to my workspace. I do my analysis. I have a checklist that I go through. And in, in no time, I have usually a couple good opportunities for me. And then it's just about waiting for the right opportunity. And we have the timing tools to help you identify when that right opportunity is, when to get in, when to get out. That is um, an individual decision, and we can't make that for you, but we certainly can show you what is going to give you the best odds of success, what is, what is likely to happen. And then it's just about staying disciplined and sticking to the methodology. I uh, don't need to, to reinvent the wheel, as Joe said. Mark and, the, and Shaking Analytics have done a fantastic job, a really great job of uh, – putting together a platform that gives you both a directional edge, which you need uh, in, in any investing, I think, uh, especially in options, and a timing edge. And this is what Wall Street has, and this is what we're leveraging Mark's experience to give that to you. And you get the benefit of leveraging his experience as well as Joe's experience and my experience working with individuals so that you can get um, a 
answers to the issues that you are having. Some people struggle with timing. Some people struggle with uh, emotional decision-making. These are all common challenges. I've dealt with them in my growth. I'm, I'm sure that many of you have, and we, we work with people all the time on overcoming those challenges using the wonderful tools that JK Analytics has put together for us. So uh, awesome. with that, I'll hand it back over to Joe. We got a few more things we want to touch on. Any other yeah. questions, please? I'm trying to get as many as I can. So any other questions you guys have, please uh, type them in. So what I want to do, I want to do one, I want to go back to the discovery screen one more time uh, before we uh, head toward the end of the webinar. Um, Along the topics of, we're talking a lot about stock selection right now, and uh, the screener is fantastic because, again, we have a variety of different investors, you know, long-term investors, short-term traders, but we also have people who have been doing this for various amounts of time. Some people for several decades, some people for just a couple of years or so, so beginners and intermediates. And I really like the discovery engine because it appeals to everybody. Um, I wanted to go back to my USB example here, and I want to highlight JP Morgan. I saw there was somebody who had requested JP Morgan, and so, I thought of JP Morgan as an example because if I just double click on the tile real quick. Give this a moment. Uh, what you're going to notice with the stock is that the earnings, uh, the date, I know it's a little late at this point um, since the market's closed, but um, you're looking at an earnings date tomorrow. So the overall rating is strong, and you can see a little image of the sun here telling you the stock reports tomorrow. Um, so with all this in mind and with institutional behavior, right, you're seeing a lot of buying taking place, compare this money flow, this institutional behavior to something like Goldman Sachs, right? Goldman Sachs is in good shape overall, but perhaps the money flow is not as strong. Uh, the earnings rating overall isn't as strong. Um, this is a good way to differentiate and distinguish between how, why one example perhaps might be better to go with than another. Um, so JP Morgan in this case, let me go back to JP Morgan. Um, both of these stocks on my watch list, by the way, um, you can see ultimately both of these are in very good shape. Um, I could either wait for, I could watch, I could have set up an earnings play for JP Morgan today, or um, I could simply uh, wait till after reports tomorrow and then open a position, um, given that it's still in pretty bullish shape. So a lot of different ways to use the program. It can be as easy or as in-depth as you'd like it to be. I mean, it's a really, really helpful program. So um, let's, let me go back again. Uh, Screen shares always give me a little anxiety. So let me just go ahead and go back to my presentation and we'll head toward the end here. Um, all right, so back in the presentation. Uh, Nike, obviously, wrapping up some of Josh's examples. Nike is a great example. Under Armour is another great example that we were looking at earlier. We decided to go with Nike, though. Um, just a great classic bear example. Uh, great selling opportunities here. You can see even Nike, when it reports positive earnings, uh, again, still has a great trouble. Uh, pre Pretty tough time uh, rebounding positively. So um, again, a variety of opportunities, stock that you're clearly thinking bearishly here. And so um, that's just the way we like to treat our classic bears. So, um, and Neil is, uh, I want to tell you about one of our subscribers, Neil, who's been uh, probably uh, pretty obviously uh, probably one of the best partners uh, I've had here at Shaken Analytics. Um, I actually started working with Anil back when I started with Shake and Analytics, and Anil was one of our subscribers who said, look, I've been using the program for a little bit, but oh, let me go back to my screen share. There it is. Sorry about that. Yep, see, I told you. The screen shares give me a little anxiety. Anyways, um, Anil is a, is a great, uh, I know he's a subscriber of ours. I think I'm a little bit more as a partner because um, he's done such a great job with the program. Um, we actually were able to go down to one of his investment groups and actually deliver a presentation just for him for his whole group. And so, um, and again, because this is somebody who's really, uh, again, taken the mystery, the uncertainty out of the overall market. Um, and Neil emails us probably every other month or so with an update on his profits, on his uh, returns, and he's doing very well. He's doing long positions, short positions, when ultimately uh, you can see 23% return, less than three weeks, not too bad at all. So um, again, we have a lot of different examples like this. It's Always great to hear back from people, especially people like Anil I've been working with for several months. Um, and again, it's it's all just a matter of uh, using a disciplined strategy, using a disciplined approach, and having the right tools like Shake and Analytics. Uh, I should note also that his returns have been so well. This is even before we had the discovery program. So that's a credit to him, um, and again, how well he's been able to use the program here. So that... That, that, that's a great survey, a great overview for what we can offer you with our Chaken Analytics program. Um, we started out today talking about how stock selection is a challenge, fear of the market, not knowing where the strength and where the weakness is, um, 
we talked about really just uh, having a disciplined approach, having confidence in your decision making. Um, and I like to believe that what we've just seen right here is, is a wonderful solution to what you're looking for. Um, we have a methodology. We use the power gearing to direct us in the right direction, right? We're using a compass, a GPS. Um, I use a GPS everywhere I'm going. It's always great to know when there's a, a traffic or a, a buildup, and so I can take the back roads. That's what the power gauge rating is doing for us. The help of the buy signals, right? Seeing a bullish stock, being able to identify the right point to get in, uh, just, just makes life so much easier. Um, strong stocks and strong industry groups, what to avoid and what to short. Um, and again, making sure that you nail down your, your, your timing. Um, all of this is just a complete package and really puts people in a position to uh, take control of your own future, take control of the, your own performance. Um, I keep reading articles throughout the industry all about how people are you know, starting to really empower themselves and educate themselves a little bit more about what's actually going on in the overall market and take control of themselves. Um, Chicken Analytics is a wonderful tool, a wonderful product um, in order to start taking control. And I, ho I hope that, I, I would imagine, if you can see this here, um, and if you can see that this is something that's really going to help you with your own direction, again, uh, let us know what you think. So um, with that said, uh, we want to make an offer to you. We want to have you join our, um, join our program, uh, become a subscriber to, to Chicken Analytics, have complete access to our program, um, as well as to the webinars that we've mentioned, webinars and one-on-ones that Josh and I and Michelle here at Chaken, who's been answering questions, um, offer every day. Um, so we want to uh, offer a discount. We usually retail uh, access to Chaken Analytics for 1950 for a complete year. Um, we're going to knock that down because you attended our webinar here, uh, 1750 for a complete year at Chaken Analytics. You can go to chakenanalytics.com forward slash trades. Um, you can also give us a call at 877-697-6783. Um, I just chatted out the link to everybody. So if you want to join the program immediately, again, shakinganalytics.com forward slash trades. We've got one more day uh, this week. Uh, we've got our onboard session tomorrow afternoon. That is Michelle's specialty. She's fantastic at showing you the ropes. If you're wondering, how did, I, how did Josh go from one screen to another? How did he go from discovery to the screener? Um, how did he create his watch list? How do I remove stocks? You're going to get all of that um, figured out tomorrow uh, when you become a subscriber. Now, if you subscribe tonight, um, again, uh, you'll have this uh, uh, $200 discount knocked off. Um, we will have access to the program within just about five minutes. So once you uh, pay over the phone or pay online, uh, whatever it might be, um, you'll be able to log into your program within just a few minutes and get yourself started. Um, it's January. It's a brand new year. No better time to get started and really have a, um, have a wonderful approach going forward. Um, so what does this all include? Just to go ahead and clarify, again, I mentioned the small group tutorials. Really, really important. I can tell you, look, our testimonials, we don't just get them out, of random, get them out randomly. Uh, we hear people who are attending our webinars all the time, a lot of familiar names. So the more you're watching our content, the more support you're getting. Um, again, the better your returns are likely to be. And so that's a really important piece. We obviously don't charge anything extra to attend. Uh, 1750 is what you get to everything within our program. So it's really, really powerful. Um, Morning Insights. So this is wonderful. Newsletters from Mark Chaikin as well as John Schlitz. So Mark Chaikin writes his article once a week, just giving his overview of the market. I like to think of it, it's kind of like Mark Chaikin's journal. Um, John Schlitz write his news, writes his newsletter every day. He's been a wonderful mentor for me. Um, I've learned a whole bunch about technical analysis just by reading his articles, let alone being able to work with the guy and talk to him uh, pretty much on demand anytime I need to. So, um, and again, you're going to get that benefit as well. Um, and we want to really do a final send off with uh, John Malden. We mentioned John Carter is one of our uh, new partners. We have another John here, John Malden, um, who also partnered with us last year, just showing all of the great progress, all of the great success that we've had throughout the year with a lot of the additions to the program, our whole support team and everything. Just making people aware that there are the resources that people in Wall Street are using available to individual, art, uh, individual investors. Um, John Malden and his team are using the program. I actually did uh, an onboard session for them not long ago, just showing them the ins and outs, showing them uh, what they haven't seen on the market before. Um, so it's just a wonderful uh, group of people who are using Chaikin Analytics. And again, we want to make this available to as many people as possible. You know, it's always funny. Mark Chaikin was retired um, uh, at the time where he came up with this idea for Chaikin Analytics. Um, and he came out of retirement once, uh, once the iPad started booming, a lot of the apps started booming. Um, and uh, again, he just said, you know what, this is something that we can really make available to individual investors throughout. Um, so with all of that in mind, again, 
uh, you have that $200 discount till Sunday, but um, Mark and the whole team here, we're, we're big proponents of taking action early. And so what we're going to do is if you do so subscribe before midnight tonight, again, before midnight, um, we're going to knock it down to $1,650. So $300 off the $1,950 price tag. Um, and that's for attending our webinar, for sticking with us the whole afternoon, um, covering all the content with us. Um, and really, it's and just, uh, again, rewarding uh, uh, taking control of yourself. And so that's something that translates over very nicely. I, I just want to say real quick, uh, I, there was a question early on about chasing chasing price and chasing trades. And uh, this is an opportunity for you not to chase price, to, to, to get it on a dip, to be decisive. That's... Uh, that's how you miss a lot of trades when you see a good opportunity and then you have the shoulda, coulda, woulda. So, uh, you know, if, if you can see how this will work for you, if, if you liked the uh, examples that we showed you and walking through the screen and what Joe was showing with the great discovery tool, then I encourage you to give us a call, go online, subscribe, get on the sessions with Joe, with myself, with Michelle, uh, work with us and let's make 2017 a great year. You know, if I know, I know there's some. I mentioned some familiar names, people who are already subscribers. Some of you who have been on either a, one of Mark's webinars or Sandy's webinars before, um, and you, you may have seen this offer before, and you might be wondering uh, why 1650, uh, why take an extra hundred dollars off. This is about taking action. Nobody's subscribed to Chicken Analytics before, found a bullish stock, did nothing about it, and profited. Right? That's never happened before. So. To show yourself that you're going to be committed to investing, committed to taking positions on a lot of these great setups here, um, again, the best way to start that is to, again, uh, knock an extra 100 for a total of $300 off the subscription price for a full year. Um, so um, if you have any further questions, I know we, we've got to start wrapping up here, but um, I think Josh and Michelle got to a lot of them. Uh, the phone number is available. We do have our support team sticking around tonight, 877-697-6783. Again, 877-697-6783. I'll go ahead and actually, sorry, oh, what am I doing? Uh, here we go. Um, I'm going to chat out that link and the uh, phone number again. Um, so make sure to get in touch with us again. Um, again, I think the midnight offers always make sense because uh, you're taking action. You're, you're taking initiative. You're taking control of your own, uh, your own money, your own portfolio, everything that you've worked very hard to earn. Um, and so first step is, again, uh, get in the door, join our onboard session tomorrow afternoon. Um, and then from that point, again, you're going to hit the ground running. So um, in the meantime, everybody, thanks so much for attending. Thank you on behalf of Mark, on behalf of Michelle and Josh here. I want to thank you all very much for joining us. Have a wonderful afternoon. Keep an eye out for the recording tomorrow morning. But in the meantime, have a great day, and we will see you tomorrow for the onboard.